In the sacred precincts of Kaaba, an extraordinary event unfolds during the Hajj, sending shockwaves through the Muslim community. Imagine a moment when a colossal snake emerges, instilling fear among worshippers. As the serpent, reminiscent of its symbolic role in the Quran as a messenger of God. Its issues a cryptic warning, religious minds are abuzz with speculation. Is this an ominous consequence for the deeds of the faithful? Could it be a mysterious communication from Jesus? Join us as we delve into this perplexing phenomenon, inviting you to witness the unfolding enigma in Kaaba, Mecca. Don't miss the revelation awaiting at the end of this journey. Exploring Quranic References In the unfolding spectacle near the Holy Kaaba during the Hajj, a colossal serpent appears, sparking widespread confusion and fear. The burning questions on everyone's minds. Could this be a prophetic warning from Jesus, a recognized prophet in Islam? Does the presence of this gigantic snake hold a symbolic meaning? Or is there an elusive mystery concealed within this bewildering phenomenon? Venturing into the verses of the Quran, where worshippers grapple with the sudden appearance of the ancient snake, connections to Jesus and his forewarnings about the beast and evil within Kaaba come to light. The sacred text reveals intriguing facets, portraying the snake as a past guardian for Allah and alluding to a future where a beast serves as a divine messenger. However, the plot thickens as Allah appears to collaborate with Satan, his own minister, in the grand scheme to mislead humanity. Examining the dialogue in Surah 2L, a curious pact unfolds between Allah and Satan. Satan, expressing his intent to mislead everyone except Allah's chosen faithful, surprisingly garners approval from the divine. The collaboration between these celestial entities raises profound questions about the intricate workings of the cosmic plan. Diving into the symbolism associated with serpents in various scriptures, a dualistic portrayal emerges. Snakes, historically representing fertility, rebirth, transformation, immortality, and healing, also embody notions of evil and punishment in certain contexts. The intricate dance of these symbolic elements adds layers of complexity to the unfolding mystery. The narrative weaves together spirituality, divine warnings, and cosmic forces, inviting contemplation on the profound interplay witnessed at Kaaba Mecca. As worshippers grapple with the implications of the colossal snake's presence, the intricate tapestry of this mystifying phenomenon unravels, leaving observers on the edge of anticipation for the revelations that lie ahead. Islamic Perspectives on Snakes In biblical narratives, snakes often assume a repulsive identity intertwined with notions of poison and cunning. Depicted as immoral beings, they do not inherently embody evil, but rather serve as a convenient metaphor for malevolence in various passages. The association between snakes and sin can be traced back to the deceptive dialogue initiated by Satan through the serpent with Eve. Hadiths further amplify this perspective, advocating for the elimination of snakes, citing specific characteristics such as two white lines on the back or a short tail as identifiers. Failure to confront these creatures is considered a deviation from the prescribed path. Interestingly, there exists a paradoxical dimension to this stance. While killing snakes is endorsed for self, family, or loved one's protection, it comes with a cautionary tale. The negative karmic repercussions of snake slaying are believed to manifest in the form of rebirth in hell or lower realms, resulting in ongoing challenges even when reincarnated as a human. Living in disease-prone areas and facing health obstacles become enduring consequences of this act. Emphasizing a balance, scriptures caution against cultivating a habit of snake killing as it leads to an endless cycle of suffering. In the broader context of religious texts, snakes consistently symbolize death, destruction, evil, temptation, and deceit. The intricate interplay of these beliefs shapes a nuanced understanding of the role of snakes in religious teachings guiding adherents to tread cautiously in their interactions with these creatures. The Beast of Allah In light of the negative symbolism associated with snakes in religious scriptures, a perplexing question arises. Why would Allah permit the manifestation of a giant snake at Kaaba in Mecca? Does this serpent hold an alternative meaning, possibly linked to the Beast of Allah? Islamic sources provide insights into the beast's task and its message offering a distinct role in distinguishing believers from non-believers. Armed with Prophet Moses' staff and Solomon's ring, 
The beast is destined to mock believers by illuminating their faces and non-believers by casting their visages into darkness. This symbolic act aims to create an unmistakable distinction between Muslims and non-Muslims, even in communal settings. Described as a colossal creature emerging from the earth, the beast's formidable nature ensures that none can escape its discerning marks. What adds to the intrigue is the beast's prophesied ability to speak, addressing mankind and highlighting their lack of faith in divine revelations. Islamic sources predict three appearances of the beast during the end times, with the final manifestation holding paramount significance. Notably, the beast is foretold to emerge from the Grand Mosque in Mecca. A hadith by Tabani, relying on the authority of the esteemed Muslim scholar Husa bin Yus, attests to the beast's emergence from Al-Masjid Al-Haram with the Kaaba at its central open courtyard serving as the throne of the beast. This prophetic narrative underscores the eschatological importance ascribed to the Kaaba in Mecca, portraying it as a focal point for significant events in Islamic eschatology. Insights into Kaaba's pagan history the identification of the beast extends beyond Islam to the holiest site in Islam, Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. An intriguing perspective among Islamic scholars suggests that the beast is none other than the snake that once guarded the Holy Kaaba in pre-Islamic times. This interpretation, rooted in the authority of eminent scholars, reveals an interesting narrative about this snake's role in Islam. According to Islamic teachings, Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, and his son Ismail Ishmael constructed the Holy Kaaba. To safeguard the gifts presented to the Kaaba, a well was dug inside it, acting as a secure repository. However, instances of theft occurred, prompting the tribe of Jerham to appoint a guard. Unfortunately, this guard, driven by greed, attempted theft. In response, Allah sent a stone that sealed the well, trapping the would-be thief. From that day onward, a snake was divinely appointed to guard the Kaaba enduring exposure to the elements for over 500 years. As the Kaaba's walls weakened and part of its covering burnt, the decision to rebuild was made. However, the snake thwarted attempts to demolish the Holy Kaaba. Desperate, the custodians prayed at the place of Ibrahim, beseeching Allah's guidance. Allah responded by sending an eagle to transfer the snake away. This historical account sheds light on the reverence and protection afforded to the Kaaba even before the advent of Islam. However, contemplating this narrative raises thought-provoking questions about Allah's role. It implies that Allah at one point guarded the treasures of a pagan shrine, the Kaaba. Additionally, pre-Islamic Arab tribes prayed to Allah for the restoration of a pagan temple, housing 360 idols. This prompts reflection on the nuanced nature of religious evolution and Allah's apparent endorsement of safeguarding a temple with multiple idols. Setting aside the beast momentarily, the revelation about Allah's involvement in guarding a pagan shrine invites scrutiny. It raises questions about Allah's association with paganism, especially as pagans prayed to Allah by name and Allah responded by transferring the snake. This raises the intriguing query, why would Allah endorse the restoration of a pagan temple? Moreover, historical Islamic sources such as Sahih Bukhari acknowledge the presence of 360 idols around the Kaaba before Muhammad's conquest of Mecca. This historical context challenges the conventional perception of the Kaaba as exclusively associated with monotheism. In conclusion, the narrative offers a unique perspective on the Kaaba's history, prompting contemplation on religious transitions, divine roles, and the multifaceted nature of cultural landscapes. It encourages a nuanced understanding of the Kaaba's past and raises significant questions about the intersection of paganism, Islam, and the divine. The Talking Beast in Arabic According to the inclinations of the worshippers, there were not only one but two idols, Hubbel and Shams, placed on the roof of the Kaaba. Rituals involved offering the blood of sacrificial animals brought by pilgrims to these deities, and at times even human sacrifices were made in devotion. Apart from idol worship, the pagans also revered celestial bodies, such as stars and the sun. The evidence presented here raises a striking proposition. Allah, as portrayed in the commentary by Imam Albi, was indeed a pagan deity. Pagans earnestly entreated Allah, and their prayers found answers. In this context, 
Allah was just one among the numerous idol gods worshipped at the Kaaba. Another noteworthy observation revolves around the name of Muhammad's father, Abdullah, meaning slave of Allah. Abdullah, being a pagan who died before Muhammad's birth, carried the name of Allah. This leads to a logical inference that Allah was a pre-existing deity in pre-Islamic Arabia, subsequently transitioning to become the central god in Islam. The word Allah predated the coinage of Muslim or Islam, underscoring its historical presence. Returning to the theme of the beast in Islamic eschatology, Surah 27, 82 describes a remarkable scenario involving Allah's messenger, a speaking beast. This beast, emerging from the earth, is foretold to appear at the culmination of time when many will forsake Allah's religion. Allah, through this beast, will distinguish unbelievers from those who worship him, marking the former for destruction. Astonishingly, this beast communicates with people in Arabic, earning it the moniker Beast of the Earth in Islamic eschatology. Given the extraordinary nature of this account in the Quran, three translations of Surah 27, 82 are provided to convey the essence of this prophecy. In essence, the beast, a real entity in Islamic eschatology, is destined to play a pivotal role in the culmination of time, according to these verses in the Quran. The Return of Jesus in Islamic Prophecy It is crucial for readers to keep two key points in mind. Firstly, the beast, as prophesied in Islamic eschatology, will speak in Arabic, the language of Allah and the Quran. Secondly, this beast will serve as a messenger of Allah, personally dispatched with a warning message to the unbelievers. The return of Jesus is anticipated to bring about two contrasting eternities, one in communion with God and the other separated from Him. The book of Malachi poignantly captures this truth. Surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace, all the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Malachi 4, 1, 2. The outcome of Jesus' return hinges on one's relationship with him, described by some as either the greatest calamity in human history or the fulfillment of the blessed hope, depending on one's faith in Christ. Beneath the Kaaba, guarded by the giant snake, lies a treasure that remains untouched. The path to this treasure may be obscured by the aftermath of past wars and conflicts. Allah's messenger foretells of a future where individuals will vie for this treasure, yet none will attain it. Strange black flags from the east will emerge, unleashing an unprecedented form of destruction. The messenger hints at the appearance of someone significant, urging allegiance even if one must traverse challenging conditions, for he is Al-Mahdi, the Caliph of Allah. Despite these prophecies in Islam, the Holy Bible issues warnings about potential dangers. It urges believers to discern misleading teachings and statements that may lead people astray. The Bible, in 1 Timothy 4.4, 4, predicts a departure from the faith in later times, emphasizing the importance of recognizing deceptive doctrines. Ephesians 5, 6 warns against being deceived by empty words, as the wrath of God awaits those who succumb to disobedience. The overall message is clear. Discernment is essential in navigating religious teachings, and believers should stay vigilant against misleading ideologies. Conclusion and Reflection Beware, guard yourselves against being captivated by deceptive philosophies and empty traditions of humankind, according to worldly principles and not aligned with the divine. Let us unite in prayer, O Heavenly Father, the Creator and Sustainer of all life. I approach you with the understanding that your will surpasses any request or imagination. Acknowledging your sovereignty, I lift up the burdens that weigh on my heart and the hearts of fellow believers. Grant us the strength to share these burdens with you during challenging times. You are the God of healing, and I humbly ask for healing, yet recognizing that your purpose prevails whether in healing or not. In both good times and difficulties, may I seek and trust you more each day. May your presence increase as I decrease, striving to become more like you. Almighty and eternal God, through your Holy Spirit, you have revealed the gospel of your Son, Christ Jesus. Awaken our hearts to genuinely receive your word preventing us from trivializing it or hearing it without producing fruit. 
lead us to cultivate a reverential fear of you and foster continuous growth in faith and mercy. Through your Son, Christ Jesus, grant us eternal salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we conclude this journey of words and reflections, I hope you found the exploration enlightening and thought-provoking. Remember that understanding and discernment are essential as we navigate the diverse tapestry of ideas and beliefs that shape our world. May you carry the wisdom gained and continue to seek knowledge, kindness, and compassion in your journey. If you have more questions, or if there's anything else I can assist you with, feel free to reach out. Until we meet again, may your days be filled with peace, understanding, and moments of profound insight. Take care and farewell.